Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. This is part two in my new series where I demonstrate how to record, run, and edit macros. In today's lesson, I'm going to demonstrate the difference between choosing an absolute or relative cell references when you are recording your macro. All right, let's begin. In my experience, there are at least three mistakes that people make when they are beginning to record a macro. Mistake number one is that they do not choose the cell, the active cell that they want to record the macro from. So what happens is they're in a random cell and the first movement that is recorded is to move to a specific cell. Mistake number two is that they fail to differentiate between using relative cell references and absolute cell references. Now, there is a wonderful screen tip that began with Excel 2007 that explains the differences between an absolute and a relative cell reference when recording a macro. So if this is not checked, we are using an absolute cell reference. Notice the command is actually highlighted. Now we're using relative. Now we're using absolute cell references. And you will also see the mistake number three of failing to differentiate between using the enter key and the control enter key when you are recording the macro. Also notice over here that we have a security warning. So I have not actually uh, put this macro into a trusted location. So the info bar that comes up here is says macros have been disabled. Here's the notification. So I want to enable the content. All right, now I'm going to select a random cell over here and I'm not going to turn on relative cell references. Mistake number one. What I want to do is I want to record the name of my company and I want to apply formatting to it. So I'm going to come over here on the developer tab of the ribbon and I want to record the macro. In the dialog box, I want to give this a name. So I'm going to call this company name one. Now, when you are given a name to a macro, you cannot include any spaces. So notice that I've used what I call camel case. I have put uppercase C for company, uppercase N for name. That's a camel case. Now, for the shortcut key, we can only use the control key, and we can only use one of the 26 letters in the alphabet. Now, I really want to use control N for company name. However, that would override the built-in keyboard shortcut control N, which opens up a brand new blank Excel worksheet or workbook. That's not what I want to do. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and use the letter N. So my keyboard shortcut is control shift N. For our purposes, I'm going to leave the uh, uh, store location in this workbook and I'm not going to add a description. Click OK. All right, now I am recording the macro. If you come down here and look in the status bar, I'm re actually recording the macro. Mistake number one, you have not selected the cell that you wish to have as the um, recipient for your macro. So I've actually recorded a movement to a specific cell. Notice also that I have not differentiated between absolute and relative references. So absolute, which is the default setting, is turned on. I'm going to type in my company name, the company rocks LLC. Now, the third mistake that people make when they're recording macros is that they either do not understand how they can use the Enter button up here, which actually is the equivalent of Control-Enter. Clicking this button enters the content and it also maintains the focus. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control plus Enter. So I have, in fact, kept the focus on cell A4. Now I want to apply formatting. So I'm going to come to the Home tab of the ribbon, apply bold and italic 
formatting. All right, at this point, I want to stop recording the macro. I'm going to go back to the Developer tab on the ribbon, and I'm going to say Stop Recording. Now, at this point, not only do I want to delete the content, but I also want to delete the formatting for the cell. So over here on the Home tab of the ribbon, in the Editing group over here, you see this little command that looks like an eraser. If I click the drop down, I want to clear both the content as well as the formatting. All right, now, once again, I'm going to select a random cell. Remember that I made several mistakes here. I used absolute rather than relative cell references. So here's the cell, and I'm really hoping that the macro will apply the company rocks LLC with the formatting in this cell. So developer tab on the ribbon, click macros, select the macro, and run it. And you see it came back to the absolute cell where I recorded the macro. That really is not what I want. And using Control Z to undo the action will not work with a macro. So I'm going to come back here to the Home tab of the ribbon. I'm going to come over here in the Editing group, and I'm going to clear both the content as well as the formatting. All right, now let me show you the advantages of using the relative references when you are recording a macro. Developer tab on the ribbon, I want to activate Use Relative References when I record the macro. All right, now I'm ready to record the macro. Record Macro, give it a name. I'm going to call this Company Name 2. And again, notice that I'm using that camel case. Well, actually, I had the caps lock on, so I'll turn that off. Company Name 2. And this time I'm going to use the uh, keyboard shortcut of Control. Remember to hold down Shift and arbitrarily I'll use the letter A. So my keyboard shortcut is going to be Control Shift A. I'm going to store the macro in this workbook and I'm not going to use a description. All right, now I am recording the macro as you can see here on the status bar. So I'm going to type in the company rocks. comma LLC. I'm going to use the um, keyboard shortcut control enter which is the equivalent of clicking on the checkbox up here in the status bar. So control enter will keep the focus in the cell. I'm going to come over here onto the home tab of the ribbon. I'm going to make it bold. I'm going to make it italic and in this case I'm going to change the font color. And I'm also going to change the font size, and I'm going to change the font family to a script. I'll make it a brush script over here. All right. So you see, with the control enter, I have kept the focus on this cell. Now, at this point, I want to stop recording. So, developer tab on the ribbon, and I want to stop the recording. All right. In this case, to run the macro before I run it, I want to come back here and I want to delete both the formatting as well as the content. All right, now I'm going to select this cell over here, E15, and I want to run this macro. Developer tab on the ribbon, macros, select the macro, and then run it. And there you go. Select another cell over here. Developer tab on the ribbon, macros, select it, and then run it. Now, notice the difference. I'm in this cell, and I'm hoping that macro number one will be entered into this cell, E13. Developer tab on the ribbon, macros, and with the first macro where I used an absolute reference, when I click run, notice that it comes back to that absolute cell reference. So you've learned three lessons. Number one, avoid the mistake of using an absolute reference when you really should use a relative reference in most cases. It is a toggle. Toggle off, toggle on. 
also differentiate between using control enter which maintains the focus in the active cell you want to minimize the movements and also make sure that before you begin uh, choosing the macro that you actually are in a cell that you want to record the macro from all right so this concludes this lesson for uh, recording running and editing macros and I do encourage you to visit my online secure uh, website where you can see all of the video training resources that I make available for you and I'll see you in the next lesson